Hey, it's Julie, and thank you for watching today. And in today, um, today's series, uh, part three of you know being calm before the storm, I also want to be talking about being calm during and after the storm, and a few things that we can do to prepare with Asperger's in the house. And um, when it comes to storms, and again, you know, one, one reason that I decided to do this uh, short series is we have a hurricane headed our general direction. And, you know, we're a few days out and they still don't know where it's going to hit. And when you are someone who really, really wants to know what's going on, what's going to happen, this kind of a forecast can be really stressful and really anxiety producing because how can we prepare if we don't know what's going to happen? How can we mentally be ready if we still aren't sure if we're going to have, you know, high winds and all these other things. Now, I will say that depending on where you live, um, what you have going on is going to vary tremendously from somebody else, even a few counties over. And again, you know, your your best source for information as far as um, shelters and we're talking about like the the the, the, the top level preparedness, you know, getting your home ready and all that. I think really your local news source has some incredible. Um, options for you to check out and it's probably best to go right there to see what would be best for your particular situation because you could be in, evacu in, in an evacuation zone you may be in a low-lying area prone to flooding and you may need to look into shelters in your area or you may be able to just stay at home. I live in the Charlotte area and so far they still don't know what's going to happen and it looks like um, you know, staying home doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue. There is a chance we can have some power outages, and that's kind of what we are in the process of preparing for in our house. But we're still keeping an eye on the weather and going from there. That being said, again, I want to talk about, you know, well, with Asperger's, what are some things on top of all this other stuff with, you know, getting, you know, being prepared for some shelf stable food, um, batteries, flashlights, and all that stuff that we need just, you know, to go about our day to day lives in case we do lose power? I want to bring up a few tips that are more specific to what may happen with Asperger's under the roof. And one of them is, um, again, anxiety tends to go hand in hand with Asperger's. It doesn't always, but it can. And um, we're going to have shakeups to our routine when a storm comes through, aren't we? Um, it's not going to be, it may not be safe if there's a lot of storms in the area in general to be using our electronics. But what if we lose power? Well, for, for some of us, um, where we find solace, where we find rest, and Asperger's or not, it's, you know, on things like this, you know, our tablets, our cell phones. It's it's going through and, and searching. Well, if we lose power, those are only going to be good for so long. So one thing I want to recommend for you, one tip I want to give you is you can consider using these portable chargers. And um, one thing with these chargers um, that was good is, you know, if you are into, you know, doing your game on your tablet or, or whatnot, because, you know, you know, internet access, I'm sure, is going to be uh, a little more tricky than normal with everything going on, um, is, uh, you know, so you're doing a game or whatever. Um, you can use these guys, but remember, when these guys use up, that's it. Another thing, too, is if you do want to grab one of these and you don't have one, you can, you can get these at, a, like, a Target, another store. You um, should be able to find them. You do need to make sure to go ahead and pre-charge them so they are ready. And um, it, it takes more than, like, 20 minutes to charge these guys. So just be prepared. If this is something you're interested in, grab one, take it home, plug it into the wall, allow several hours for it to do its thing. And I know in our case, the ones we have, none of them came pre-charged, maybe yours will, but that's just something else. You don't want to go buy one of these, need it, and then realize, oh, crud, it's, it's, it's not working. So, But this could be helpful if you need to have a calming mechanism, if you just want to listen to your music or something like that, but you need electricity to do it. That's one tip. Another is... Um, when the winds come through and you know in our area there, there's you know we may have some some noisy windy days if, if this is something that might be hard from a sensory processing disorder perspective you know grab the old standby make sure you have some earplugs ready or something else to kind of combat that noise because it can be a little unnerving when we hear that howling and all those sounds and you know when they're sustained winds it, they just keep coming and coming and coming and even if we have no other issue with our home or anything like that it can it can just mentally be draining so just be prepared for that from a sensory perspective um, another thing too to prepare for is um, if you need to do things um, well I guess we'll get to that in a second with with the after but but during it just be prepared for also um, if you do lose power 
we're, we're going to talk food. And again, you know, you, you've, you've heard all the stories, you've heard the reports, make sure you have things like, uh, you know, your, your canned foods and shelf stable and all that. But, you know, if you're used to having your peanut butter and jelly every day for lunch, you're used to having a certain breakfast, a certain dinner, um, a certain kind of food. Like in our house, if y'all read my book, you know, my, my kid loves broccoli. Well, we're not going to be cooking any any frozen baby broccoli florets, you know, if the power goes out. So that's just going to have to go right off the menu right there. So it's good to go ahead and think about, instead of, you know, phrasing it as, well, we can't have broccoli, we put the negative in there, think of what we can have, what we can do, and try to approach it from that perspective and prepare that way. So think of foods that you um, and those in your, your home will eat and will tolerate if for some reason you are without power for a little bit of time and this involves you know meal preparation so that's something to keep in mind so that that is a change we're looking for something may change with that if um if you do find you have to go to a shelter we've got lots of changes with that um there's again other places you can go to for resources um understand how those operate because that's going to vary from place to place but you know again we talk about those changes with our aspie or you know maybe it's, it's us um Another thing to consider, too, is when these come through, you know, again, it goes back to we're so reliant on these electronics and, and to find things that we can do that, that aren't reliant on those and just know our routine is going to be shaken up a little bit. Maybe we're going to go, we're supposed to go to school and then we go to a, somewhere afterwards each day and it's a lot of fun or it's just part of our routine. We go see Dr. So-and-so every Wednesday and, and that's not going to be happening for a while. Um, that, that's going to be a switch. And for some, it's, it's not going to matter, but for some, it will. So just be prepared that all these different changes that are about to take place due to cancellations, um, no matter what the storm does, will affect many people who are used to having that set routine, and it's going to upset the apple cart um, a little bit. Now, once the storm goes through, if you do lose power, you do have some debris, and you do need to do cleanup, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully you won't have to deal with that, or it'll be very, very mild. But if it's something where it's like all hands on deck, let's get the family in. We got a bunch of tree limbs down, that kind of thing. Um, whatever, you know. Obviously, use safety first. But again, with sensory processing disorder in mind, you might want to grab a pack of gloves um, to go and help with that, because that will help with that that tactile bit. Um, you know, picking up the branches in the yard. You know, we, we can use our bare hands if we want, or even work gloves. But you know, something like this that's going to be uh, keep a, a barrier with the moisture could help that person who just just can't deal with that touch because it's just just too much to go through and help you with that. So just keep in mind some things with these storms while the storm's going on. Sensory processing disorder, the the loudness, the the honest to gosh, the just even the change in the in the atmospheric pressure. Some of us are are really sensitive to that. We, we actually notice that and we have changes in our bodies with that that we can sense, you know, other, other people may roll their eyes at, but it doesn't make it any less real for us. And um, and just do what you can to think outside the box to, to help your specific situation. And then once the storm's done, hopefully everything's fine, but again, if you lose power, go ahead and be prepared ahead of time. Have your candles have the usual stuff they tell you about, but also put it through an Aspie lens and what is something that your family needs? What are things that you do to pass the time away? Um, maybe it's a run to the library and grab a bunch of books right now while you still can. Um, and just think of what you can do to prepare, to be prepared. And, and again, try, try to starve that anxiety monster so we don't turn this into a worry situation. But I think you're going to be okay. So again, I'd, I'd like to go into super duper details on all this, but the truth is we're all different. Um, we're in different situations. Just again, think about changes in routine are going to happen. How are we going to deal with that? Um, things are going to get back to normal after the storm. You know, we, we can't say if it's going to be five minutes after or, you know, five days after, or, you know, or even longer. But things can return back to a state of what we consider normal. But just be prepared for the change, the anxieties that come along with it. And look at this as an opportunity to just, you know, have some family time and just to, to, to stretch ourselves because we're going to get through this. We've gotten through it before. If you're my age or older, heaven knows there's a really high chance you've been through something like this. Uh, you know, several years ago, gosh, many, many years ago when I was in college, I lived through an incredible ice storm and was without um, power and and all kinds of things for, for, for a good week. And that was in, um, you know, we're talking, you know, it's it's still, you know, freezing temperatures out and all that. And it was pretty rough. I know some of y'all been through the hurricanes. Um, some of y'all been through tornadoes. And it's it's a challenge. 
but you're, you're here to talk about it, right? So if you've been through something like this and you want to share some tips that have helped you with an Asperger's lens in mind, please put it in the comments below with a helpful tone so we can help each other and know that we are in this together uh, and we are going to get through it and it will be okay. Thanks for watching, y'all. Stay safe.